After almost 10 years since its announcement, countless delays, script changes, reshots, and a few felonies here and there, The Flash is finally here. And it is pretty mid. Hold on. Before you start saying that I'm a DC hater, or whatever you want to call it, I'm actually a big DC fan, and I was genuinely looking forward for The Flash to be this incredible movie that everyone in Hollywood seems to have loved. But unfortunately, it wasn't the case. But before I start ranting about the movie, I just want to tell you that this video will contain spoilers, so if you haven't watched it yet and plan to do, save this video for later and let me know if you agree with me or if you think that I'm an idiot that just talk out of his ass. Now that we got this out of the way, let's talk about The Flash. In The Flash, we follow Barry Allen in his attempt to save his parents' lives by traveling back in time. But his actions causes an enormous butterfly effect in the multiverse, leaving him in a reality where most of the Justice League does not exist, and a familiar foe is back, with no one able to stop him. This movie is an adaptation, and I'm using adaptation in a very loose way, of the comic book story Flashpoint, in which the same thing happened, but with a better story, better characters, better villains, and honestly, better everything. Like, they literally just had to follow the comic books, to get it right. And it wasn't even that hard, because they did an animated version of that, and it was amazing. But before I start talking in more details about that, I want to talk about what I actually enjoyed about this movie. First and foremost, Michael Keaton's Batman. He literally stole every scene he was in, and if you are a fan of his version of Batman, you are gonna have a blast watching this movie. At first, I wasn't a big fan of the idea of him being the Batman in this movie, not because I think he's not a good Batman or anything like that, quite the opposite honestly, he's on my top 3 list of actors who portrayed Batman, but because they've wasted the opportunity to bring to the big screen the OG Flashpoint Batman, Thomas Wayne, who would have been portrayed by Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Come on guys, we're never gonna see that happen now. But I have to say that he was the best thing in the movie for me, followed by Sasha Kale Supergirl. I've heard a few people complaining about her character, saying that she was too depressed and that she does not look like Supergirl. First of all, her costume is based on the Supergirl costume from the Injustice comics. And in my opinion, it's much better than her classic outfit. And about her being too depressed, dude, she fucking saw her planet explode. And when she landed on Earth, she was captured, experimented and tortured for years. And you still think that she wouldn't be a little bit depressed after that? Honestly, I'm surprised that she didn't join forces with Zod at this point. <sighs> Sorry about that. Anyway, Sasha Kale was amazing, and I hope she gets a shot on playing Supergirl in James Gunn's DCU. Another two performances that I want to single out are Ben Affleck's final portrayal of Batman and Ezra Miller's performance as Barry 1 and Barry 2. In past interviews, Ben Affleck said that he finally got it right in the flesh, referring as his performance as Batman, and I agree. In the times that he got to portray the Cape Crusader due to all the mess that was the Josh's League, problems with Warner Bros, and even a little bit of overhate from the fans, he never got a chance to truly shine, and ironically, in these few minutes that he's in the movie, it's probably his best performance as Batman. And that makes me sad, knowing that this is going to be his last appearance in the role. Until they eventually adapt Crisis on Infinite Earths, and he will probably have a cameo over there. Also, look at how they massacred my boy, oh my god! Not in front of Wonder Woman, come on, come on. Who, who, who is the responsible of the costume department in this movie? I need to talk with them, okay? But now, let's address the elephant in the room. Ezra Miller. Criminal offenses and felonies aside, Ezra Miller is a great actor, and you can see that specifically with Barry One, who goes through this journey of grief and acceptance, being a leader to this improvised Justice League, and at the end, realizing that he has to let his mother die, so that he can put everything back to normal. Basically, I like how they didn't make him an insufferable idiot for the whole movie. Unlike Barry too. oh my god. God, if there's a character that I was very close to hate in this movie was Barry 2. He's the embodiment of everything that I hate about Ezra Miller's Flash, but up it to a hundred. Yes, he gets better by the end of the movie, but he's still so annoying during the rest of it. Changing subject, the action sequences are a mixed bag for me. They are what you would expect from a Flash movie, some work like the battle with the Kryptonians and both Batman's action sequences. 
and others simply don't, like the scene where Flash is saving the babies and when Supergirl is freed by our main characters. And you can't talk about action sequences in these movies without mentioning CGI. And honestly, I don't know what's going on here. Some shots are amazing and others are like mediocre at best. I've heard that this may have been a conscious decision to show how Barry may see things, but to me, it looks like they didn't have the time to finish all these scenes, so they just did what they could and called it a day. The villains in the movie never feel as an actual threat, since their screen time is basically non-existent. Zod isn't as scary as an opponent as he was in Man of Steel. And I get it, you know, he's not supposed to be the main villain of the movie, but he did the same fucking thing with Dark Flash. He just appeared for a few minutes, we find out who he is, and then he dies. There's no epic big battle, fight or whatever, anything. He literally shows up and dies a few minutes later. And this is another problem that I have with this movie. The pace of everything. The movie starts really fast, but then it gets very slow, and then it goes back to be very fast, and I could see as this being a metaphor for Barry losing his powers and then getting them back, but at this point I'm not sure of anything. And now, the cherry on top of all this mess, the cameos. We live in a moment in cinema where the multiverse is a thing, everybody knows at this point. Marvel is doing it, Sony is doing it, everyone is doing it. So The Flash was the perfect opportunity to fit in some nice cameos for the fans to scream and jump up their seats, but this was not what happened with The Flash. Other than Ben Affleck's Gal Gadot, Michael Keaton and Jason Momoa cameo, all the other ones were underwhelming. Sure, if you're a big DC fan, you will probably get hyped and happy with these cameos, but for the average viewer, they're not gonna get hyped seeing Nicolas Cage as Superman, they don't know the story about that. And I'm not even gonna talk about the Christopher Reeve cameo, cause that felt a little bit cheap and disrespectful for me at least. And the PS3 CGI did not help a bit. But to be fair, I laughed a little bit when I saw George Clooney as Batman. To close this review, I wanted to say that The Flash was a movie that had everything to succeed. But with a plot that is a very shitty adaptation of one of the Flash's best comic book stories, mediocre CGI and cameos that felt all over the place, The Flash fails to be the start to a reboot that DC desperately needs. So I'm gonna give it a 5.5 out of 10. Hey everyone! Hope you guys enjoyed this video, I know it's not normally the type of video that I do, I just wanted to try something new and I really like it, so don't worry, I'm still gonna talk about anime, still gonna talk about manga, it's just that now and then I might talk about something else. So see you next time, bye!